Creating a gold-plated text effect in Affinity Photo and I'm using the iPad. Just some notes, this project is suitable for either photo, designer or publisher with just a few adjustments. And although this image is done in 640 480 pixel size, it would be better done at three times that size so that it's sharp and free of jaggies when appearing on a, uh, for instance, a computer screen. So step one, open a new Affinity Photo document, new document, by clicking on the plus symbol and choosing new document. I'm creating a 640 480 preset as I mentioned, but you can go for whatever size you like, and in fact a much larger size canvas is better. I've created a preset with it, 640 480, and click on OK, and away we go. Now the first step in this process is to fill the background layer with black. Use the flood select tool, select black color, use the flood select tool, click on your canvas, and it will fill with black. Very hard to see. Set your foreground color to white and add your text. Now we're doing gold, so I'm typing in the word gold. Pretty easy. Times New Roman is probably a good traditional font to use for this. It's gold, and often you see gold represented in Times New Roman, one of the old standbys. Resize your text with the free transform handles. Let's drag those things out there, obviously. And center it in the middle of the document. If you can't see those center lines, turn your guides on, vertical and horizontal, and they'll show up there. And when you center it, it will change to red and green to show you that it's actually exactly on the line. Now, duplicate that text layer so that we've got the word gold appearing twice. Two layers, you've got a black layer, a gold, and a gold copy. You use the commands menu to duplicate the text layer. So you click on that one, you go up there, and click on duplicate. We're going to be working with the text copy layer throughout the next few steps. Now, with the text copy layer selected, tap on the fill tool icon on the toolbar. It's actually a gradient fill tool. Not that one, not the bucket, but that one there that looks like hmm, a bucket on its side, if you like. We're going to create a gradient. Now, clicking on that brings up your gradient context toolbar. But we don't need that for the moment. Well, not to this slide, anyway. With the context toolbar up, we're going to set the colors for the gradient. Set the gradient type to linear and the handles will appear horizontally, but move them around so you've got them centered vertically. We're going to select a lighter and darker gold color for the gradient. When the gradient appears, tap on the top dot to select it and then click on the color studio to choose a color for the top side of the gradient. Don't worry about the other things yet. We've just got linear there. Tap on that dot. Tap on that dot. And we bring up the color studio. I've entered the colors for red, green, and blue as 247, 238, and 173, which gives us a lighter color gold on the top edge. Just there, you can see that's gold. That stayed the same murky gray white down the bottom. And that's that one there. We'll change that now. Tap on the lower control dot to select it. Brings up the Color Studio again. Now enter 193, 172 and 81 for that. And it gives us a darker color gold on the lower gradient. You can see it there. So lighter and darker. Exit out of the color picker and exit out of the gradient editor as well. Your text should now look like this. It doesn't look like much at the moment, but we're getting there. 
light gold down to dark gold. Don't exit out of the layer dialog box, we have more to do. We need to reflect the darker colour on the lower gradient. Pale in the middle and dark towards both edges. You can see that's darker there, darker there and paler in the middle. So select the gradient option again if you've unselected it and that brings up the box with the gradient in it. Set a marker there and a marker there and you can see you've got a dot in the middle controlling dot now. Select the top dot and apply the colours 193, 172, 81 to it. Over there, that's that dot there selected and that marker there controls where the gradient is in the centre. You can see that you might have to play with that a little bit if you're unfamiliar with it. When you're finished your image should now look like this. You can see it's dark, light, dark. Now the next step, select the bevel and emboss options. Bevel and emboss, turn it on and click there. If you just turn it on you won't get the context toolbar. You have to click on bevel and emboss. Click directly on the words as I say to switch on the bevel and emboss options. Now you have the context toolbar so you want to set the type to inner there and up there scale with object. That's so that if you move the size of the words of that layer the effects will move with it otherwise you'll leave them behind and that looks very odd I can tell you. Set the depth to 20. That's that there. Now you can see the radius and the depth are linked. So the radius is 20 pixel and the depth is 20 pixels. So that's, that's referring to that, the depth. We're still on bevel and emboss, right? Scaling with object. Increase the azimuth. That's the direction of the light. This, in, this enhances the lighting effect. Now set the azimuth to 275. Think of that as a compass. And what you can see on a compass, think of the light as coming from 275, which is over that way somewhere, about the same angle as that red arrow. And there's your light reflecting on the edges of the gold. Now things look better. Now, again in the FX toolbar, set outline to on. Set the field style to contour in the context toolbar. We put outline on, fill style is contour. And this will enhance the gold effect even more. There's no need to change anything else, just turn contour on. The alignment's outside which may be already, the radius is 1.4, opacity is 100%. You can actually play with those if you, if you want to and um, adjust the effect slightly. Lastly, we're going to add an inner glow. We're going to add an inner glow effect to enhance the gold colours. To do that, tap directly on the FX menu again and select inner glow. Select it there, make sure you tap it there. That brings up the context toolbar. First, change the blend mode to multiply. Then lower the opacity to 50% and click on the colour circle just there. Not the colour circle up the top. Disaster lies there. Click on that circle there. Right next to intensity. Now enter 232 128 31. 232 128 31. You can just tap on those. You don't have to drag the slider. Tap on them. Bring up the, um, the little calculator box and type the numbers in directly. This gives us an orangey colour. This was one sampled from a photo of a gold brick. 
Oh, I wish I had one. And exit out of the colour pickle. Pick, picker. Pickles. Pickles. Food on the brain. Finally, increase the radius size to 15, pic, 15 pixels. Not pickles. Pick, pixels. <laughs> Tongue tied. Now it looks like this. You can see it's marginally darker and the reflections are looking good. So we're done with the text copy layer at this point. So deselect the text copy layer for now. Just untick it there and it will go away, leaving the original white box, the white text. Because this is the one we're going to work on now. You'll turn this back on later, of course, but for now you want it out of the way so you can see what you're doing. Now, clicking on the FX layer to bring it up, select Outline to bring up the Context Toolbar. And there we are there. First, increase the stroke radius to 5 pixels. Then change the fill type from colour to gradient. It's solid colour at the moment. And we're going to change that to gradient. And that will bring up the gradient editor. You see I've clicked on gradient there. The alignment's outside. Everything else is the same, 5 pixels. But by clicking on gradient, it's brought up the gradient toolbar. For the left colour, 247, the left is on that side, 247, 238 and 173. And for the colour on the right, when you click on that one, 193, 172 and 81. They're pretty much the same colours as you used on the text. And you can see there in the outline that it's actually changed. It's quite pale there and somewhat darker there. We've gone horizontal here and not vertical. Apply the bevel and emboss style to the stroke. So click directly on the words bevel and emboss in the FX menu and bring up its options. This time, rather than adding a bevel and emboss style to the text, we're adding it to the stroke. We need to change the option type to emboss. And now all of these settings will be applied to our stroke. Set the radius to 5 pixels. There's your radius there, 5 pixels. It also changes the depth to 5 because they're still linked. Now, we're going to apply the outer glow style. One last thing to do here, in the layer FX dialog box, we're going to add a bit of a glow to the text. This will be an overall glow and very light. Tap directly on the words outer glow to turn on the outer glow style and bring up its options. Then change the options as shown in this slide now. Lower the opacity value to 50%, then click on the colour circle, which brings up the colour picker. picker. Enter 183, 145, 79 for the colour. It's another gold brick photo sample. And exit out of the colour picker. Finally, set the size to around 29 pixels. And increase the intensity... It shows 50% there, but you might need around 73. 73 gives it a, a much more hazier glow around the outside of the letters. That might be a matter of choice, so play with that one. And it looks like this. You can see I've left the intensity at 50%, not 73 as I suggested, but there's only a very faint very 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 faint glow of gold around the outside there now we're going to add some sparkles add the new layer sparkles you can see i've got all the layers switched on here now so you can see the entire thing and we've got a new layer called sparkles 
Locate one of the lens flare brushes to use as a sparkle. Now lens flare brushes are available free from Brush Easy, for example, and probably many other places. And that's a link to them. It's quite free. You just click on it. You probably have to log in, create an account, but that's all right. They're free. So do that. And the link is in the description in any case. And uh, download your free lens flare brushes. Now, lens flare brushes, they create those little star shapes there, you see? With your brush selected and your sample colour ready to go, you know how to sample colour, don't you? If you've got that selected, you've got a, you can um, use the little eyedropper and sample the colour in there, for example, and that gives you your colour there. Change the brush size, because the default brush size is massive. You don't want it massive. I think I set it to 200 there. I haven't shown it, but the brush size is 200. It may even be smaller. That one certainly is. I went right down for that one. Adding sparkles is fun, but too many is too many. So I only add a few. One, two, three, I think I've got four on there. So that's it. Alchemy, turning your work into gold. I hope you've enjoyed this little video. Find it very useful. There is lots of ways of experimenting with that. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.